So why are we talking about fraud today? Lots have happened. Um, I think this is no surprise that work model has shifted. So whether you're in the office, not in the office, maybe part of the time being in the office, things are very different, different now. Resources, for the most part, this is not consistent across the case, but the companies that we talk to, you know, which includes bank and credit unions, includes other industries as well, for the most part, people are losing staff or they're losing the experience. So maybe they might be bringing on new people, but they're just not as experienced in the industry, in the company. And times are getting tougher, right? For the daily person who may have suffered maybe losing a spouse's income or well, we didn't get our bonuses this year, or we've been furloughed in the past, it uh, might be looking more and more attractive to maybe get a little something for nothing or getting some easy money. What all that contributes to, you know, whether or not you're in the accounting process is just a controls breakdown, right? Either you're no longer executing some of your key controls because you just don't have the bodies to do it or you're not doing it right, um, or just the business landscape itself has changed so dramatically that we have not really gotten back and revisit what our anti-fraud controls should be like. This is a survey done by the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners and Grant Thornton, and what they found was 51% of organizations have uncovered more fraud since the onset of the pandemic, which I don't think is a surprise. 71% expect the level of fraud impacting their organizations to increase over the next year. And that aligns with the fact that if you look at where the public companies are going, right, because their data is a little more transparent than private companies, the SEC just received 77% more tips on security fraud last year compared to the year before, which is a huge jump. This is a report that is put out by the Association of Fraud, uh, Certified Fraud Examiners, and they put out this report every two years. So every two years, they take all the investigations and the cases that their certified fraud examiners would perform and investigate, and then they compile certain stats, like how the fraud was perpetrated, uh, who did it, how many years of experience did they have, what was their motivation, um, how could the companies have you know, prevented it, what type of companies are more susceptible to fraud perpetration. So what they said is that even with the shift towards digital payments, even with the shift towards remote work environments and technology-based organizations, the schemes and methods that the fraudsters use to commit occupational fraud remain relatively consistent over time. So people are using kind of like their tried and true methods, right? When it comes to operations to commit fraud. And I think that is a really great sign because that means we can do tried and true methods to combat it. As a refresher, this is the occupational fraud tree. There's three general types of occupational fraud. One is corruption and that's um, kickbacks, bribes, and that's kind of the, the Michael Kill case that we just visited where he was taking you know, gifts and such. Um, on the right hand side is financial statement fraud and that's more SEC oriented where this is talking about like increasing revenues um, you know, not according to GAAP or um, improperly decreasing expenses or I know this is small, I think there's um, improper disclosures in your filings. So that one, um, I think the Cheesecake Factory got into some trouble last year around this. So they, at the height of the pandemic, they were telling their investors that the outlook was, I think, fine or bright or um, good outlook going into the pandemic. When in fact, I believe at the time, they were like just a couple of weeks away from not even able to pay rent on their location. So they came under fire um, by the SEC for that. But in that middle part here, that huge pie here is the asset misappropriation category, which is the theft of cash or company assets. Most occupational fraud that we see are gonna fall within this category. You see there's tons of schemes that you can run.